So this week we're making a French pattern trade axe. This is part one of two and we are forging the body of the axe out of wrought iron and welding in the steel bit. Uh, I'm actually using old paddle rods uh, that are left over from jobs I've done for the canal. Uh, these paddle rods date from the 18th to early 19th century. Uh, the iron's quite coarse. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw it out and weld it over a couple of times to try and refine the grain a bit. So raw iron's quite nice to work with uh, if you work it properly. Uh, because this stuff is quite coarse it tends to need to be worked at a welding heat. Um, in fact even the finer stuff it's good to work it at a welding heat. So draw it out flat and fold it over and then I will weld it up again under the power hammer. So wrought iron is quite nice for welding because of the silica and slag content it tends to be self-fluxing um, in that the silica contained in the iron will form a protective layer around it. Um, so you do actually get it hotter than um, mild steel for fire welding it as well. Uh, the stock size I'm starting with is around about an uh, inch and a quarter. So I'm quite glad I've got the power hammer to do this. So it's lovely, lovely soft material as well. It's got much less resistance to it than mild steel has. So Having welded it over a couple of times, I'll then spread it out a bit. I'm aiming for a width of 2 inches or around 50 mil. And uh, once I've folded it out to the correct width, I'll just go over it again with a power hammer just to get out any of the following marks. And there I have my billet. So, one end's a bit rough, doesn't really matter. That's going to be the eye end, so it will get welded up again. The other end has a bit of a curve to it. Also doesn't matter because the next stage is to upset it a bit. So this is going to be the edge end, obviously. Uh, so upsetting me, upsetting that will give me a bit more spread for the X blade. And I'm going to upset it to a width of around 80 mil. So, you know what? Quite a nice curve to it as well. So I'm just knocking out any uh, dings and galls in there, which have been caused by the upset. So that's that upset to the full 90 mil width. So far no cracks or delamination. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do a chisel split along the edge ready for a carbon steel insert. So go over to the vise and I will actually rest the bottom of the material on the uh, screw drive. And to start off with I will just do a little line down the middle just to make sure that I am chiseling centrally. And once I'm happy with that, I will go for it and make sure to quench off the chisel at every pass. Just to save it from overheating or losing its temper, etc. Uh, give it a straighten between heats. 
and just keep going and I went to a depth of around 20 mil So the next stage is to uh, thin out these lips a bit uh, and that is basically scarfing them to stop them from forming a shear plane. Uh, so I'm bringing them to a taper, I'm going in with a cross beam to spread them out a little bit as well uh, to start off with and then I will come in lengthways with a cross beam just to get that pointed taper on the end. Uh, and I'm doing it from the inside uh, to demonstrate if I do it from the outside you tend to end up with a step like that which is quite difficult to get out um, I mean the only way to get it out is to open it up a bit more and go in from the inside like, like I did in the first place so you might as well just do it in the first place um, then I will partially fold over the lips uh, and that will just allow the split to grip the insert a bit better. So for the insert I'm using EN42 spring steel which is spring steel with a slightly higher carbon content and I'm using the wet anvil technique to keep the metal clean because the water turns to steam and just blasts off any scale or dirt. Now I'm just forging a taper onto this a nice solid taper uh, and I want to get it quite thin maybe under a mil well quite well under a mil uh, practical reasons so you can see that taper coming in now and you do have to keep turning it 90 degrees in order to keep straightening it so then I'll go to the vise and just chisel in some little nicks uh, and these will just bind with the body of the axe in order to stop the bit from falling out. So I start the cut at 45 degrees and just rotate as I go through and that just kicks out the teeth to about 90 degrees which is what you want. So next stage I will stick the chisel stick the axe in the fire and I will cover up the main body of the axe leaving the split uncovered uh, that just allows it to heat up heat up the whole chisel really and I'll drop a bit of borax in there uh, as flux for the carbon steel and that is just a case of laying it on the bit bit and just banging it in so you can see that the teeth have binded it in quite well already and I will just close this up and mark off the excess on the bit which needs cutting off. So then it's just a case of using a grinder, could use a chisel if you wanted, um, it's a lot easier with a grinder, just cut off the excess. Like so, and you can see that I also rounded off those square corners and that will just help prevent the steel bit from burning off. So before I actually weld this in place I'm going to clean out my fire uh, which you guys with the bottom draft won't have to do. Uh, but I'm basically removing the clinker because I've been using wrought iron. I've been running the fire at a welding heat so you can see how hot I've been running this fire by the size of the clinker. Uh, this has formed over uh, three hours, two, three, two hours, three hours. Uh, as you can see it's a monster. So and the reason I'm cleaning out the fire is because um, it's raising the oxidizing layer of the fire. Uh, so I want to pile up the fire nice and high to have a nice wide neutral layer which will reduce the burning risk to the steel. 
So I'm sticking the axe in there um, eye first and then I will turn it round and stick the bit in uh, and that just means that the whole thing is hot and it's not going to suck out the heat from the welding area. So let's stick a bit of flux in the carbon steel and go for a weld. So like I said before, raw iron tends to be self-fluxing anyway because of the silica content. Um, I didn't use anywhere near as much flux as I normally do for welding in steel bits. Uh, it's all together very nice. The one thing I should have been careful of is how soft the raw iron is. Um, I should really have used a smaller hammer for it to save spreading the material quite so much. Uh, when you work mostly in mild steel you do tend to forget forget that. But after I've welded in the width of the blade I'll just weld in the edges, close up any open seams, make sure there's going to be no galls in there, no cold shuts. Use the bit if necessary. So and you can see by the curve on there how much it's spread by just welding in the carbon steel bit. So, but as you can see, the weld's gone in quite nicely. So next stage is give it a jolly good scrub and make that curved section a straight section. Uh, this is a trade axe, so it does have quite a, quite straight edges. Doesn't have, well, doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Most of the originals weren't perfectly straight, but to the modern eye, go a bit. It's not straight. So there we go. That is the body of the axe prepared. This is the end of the first part. In the second part we will do the eye and we're going to do that as a asymmetrical weld like we did with the Anglo-Saxon ads. As always if you enjoy these videos please consider donating on Patreon. Every penny donated goes towards making these videos and uh, here's this week's list of Patreon donors. So thanks for watching and I'll uh, see you next one.